what to do when when right goes wrong is there any justifiable reason for my heart being broken is there any purpose in my pain can you make sense out of my sadness or did I just go through all of that for nothing it's about the obstacles it's about the challenges it's about the pain that you endure along the way stand on the platform and when that happens your mind has to immediately shift back because now you felt and tasted something that you could only get through winning. Are you willing to do it again? If you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. You have to do the process. The process is non-emotional. It's just, you have to do it. It's about the grind. Do you have the courage to think? Because if you can think, you can change. You can move, you can evolve, you can grow, you can become. You are one idea away. Your credit is not a problem. Your car is not a problem. Your situation is not a problem. Your thoughts are the problem. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Everything starts in the thoughts you think. You are no better than the thoughts you think. If you think little, you go little. If you think weak, you go weak. What I need you to do is I need you to find a reason to keep going. And if you can find a reason to keep going, I know you're strong enough. Every human has what it takes to get past whatever they're going through, if they decide to. If you want to level up your character, then you need to get out here and do it. That's the game. Go look in the mirror right now. Humble yourself. Stop sitting there with an ego. Realize you ain't shit. You need to be around brave men. You need to be paying attention. Listen to the truth. I wasn't born this way. I absolutely not really made myself this way. And any single one of you men out here can do the same thing. If you're a man, you have duty, you have honor, you have things you should be doing regardless of how you feel. If yeah. you should get up and do what needs to be done. And to me, those are the individuals that win in life. I'm asking you, will you stay mediocre for the rest of your life? Success happens to you not because you desire it, because you earn it. Everybody desires it. It comes only if you're capable of it. You know, we say in yoga, if you keep one eye on the goal, you have only one eye to find your way. That's not a good way to play a game. It's better both your eyes are on the game. The winning the cup and the accolades are things which happen because we play a game well. It's not because we want them, it'll happen. Because we play well, it happens. So it's always best that we keep our eyes, our body, our mind, everything focused on just one thing. That is when a human being functions at his maximum efficiency. If everything is focused in one way, your body, your energy, your mind, everything is organized in just one direction. A person who's going in one direction will go somewhere. A person who's trying to go in five different directions will not go anywhere. For one who is seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility for him, there is no failure. For one who is looking at the simple events of this life itself as the goal of life, for him, there is failure and success. If you are just seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, if you have a good deal, you use that for your well-being. If you have a bad deal, you use that for your well-being. The economy was on the boom when every fool could be successful. When the economy is on the boom, everybody gets carried, isn't it? Now there has been a meltdown. Now it takes something else to be successful. It doesn't matter what the hell happens with your life. If you are seeing this life only as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, then whatever the situation, it is beautiful and very useful. So various situations in your life, either you can use it to make yourself stronger and better, or you can sit and cry. This is the choice you have. Everything, it doesn't matter what happens. The most horrific event happened in your life that also can be used for your growth and your well-being. So the fear of failure, Failure is bad enough. Fear is adding spice to it, isn't it? 
I'll give you a formula. If you want to know what makes people happy at the most basic level, when your life conditions match your blueprint, when your life conditions are what you're expecting, not your ultimate dream, but when you meet your basic expectations, you're happy. If your life conditions are better than you expected, you're over the moon. If your life conditions don't match your blueprint, your expectations, you have pain. If your life conditions don't match your blueprint and you believe I'm unable to change it, it's something wrong with me or it's a permanent problem or it's pervasive or it's personal, you know, you get into learned helplessness, then you're gonna suffer. And so nothing is permanent, not even the body is permanent. Certainly no problem is permanent. Your soul might be the only thing that might be permanent, right? So it's really helping people to understand that when the life conditions change, your blueprint has to change with it. Either like, if you're not happy, you either have to change your life or change your blueprint, your expectations. Usually it requires a combination of those two. So often what you say people is sliding is, their life conditions changed, and then what they were doing wasn't enough to make them feel the way they wanted to feel, and so then they adapted to an old style of coping. They went back to smoking or drinking or eating or yelling at people or whatever the pattern may be. But that's because they didn't continue to grow. And so that's why it's not a static thing with me. I teach people not just, okay, you're gonna make these changes in your values. It's like, you gotta look as your life conditions change, you're gonna make that happen. As you hit different stages of life, you're gonna have to make those decisions. And people don't, everybody wants their life to be better, but no one wants to change, right? So we have to keep changing as the life conditions change. We gotta update our blueprint, our values, our beliefs, our rules about how to play the game. And we have to update our behaviors to adapt to where the environment is. If you don't do that, you're in trouble. There are many people during COVID who it was the most horrific experience. There are many people that learned to use COVID, not let COVID use them. They grew their businesses, they expanded their mind, they shifted their emotions. They did things they never would have done. Other people gained 20 pounds, right? So it's all a matter of do you adapt to the life conditions and do you learn how to learn? Because this isn't a one-time thing. Oh, I did this thing. I went and worked out for a weekend, now I'm pumped. Well, great, how long is that gonna last? You're gonna have to continue to use that and have a daily practice. Otherwise, you of course go back. And that's the biggest missing thing. I teach people daily practices that give them to take what they've learned and make it ongoing in their life as opposed to, wow, I had this great weekend. The big question is, are we letting ourselves become what we wish to become? In this most important subject of association, here are some actions you may want to take. First, disassociation. You may, after a study of those three questions, who am I around, what are they doing to me, and is that okay, you may come to the serious conclusion that there are some people you just have to break away from. I'm not saying that it's an easy step to take, and it's not to be taken lightly. However, I am saying it may be an essential task. You may just have to make that hard choice not to let certain negative influences affect you anymore. Remember, it could be a choice that saves the quality of your life. The second action you may want to take is limited association. It could well be that you are spending too much time in a certain area of your life with a certain group of people. It's easy to put time and effort in the wrong place. The guy spends three hours at the ball game and 30 minutes listening to the sermon. See, that's called out of balance. 30 minutes for spirituality, three hours for entertainment. That doesn't weigh well five years from now, 10 years from now, when you take a look at the sum total of your values in your life. Here's one of the easy ways to end up with a mediocre average life, spending major time on minor things. Sophisticated people learn to weigh everything before they spend time or money. You've got to weigh before you pay. Whether you're going to spend heavy time or light time, you've just got to weigh. Otherwise, if you're not careful, you can get trapped into spending heavyweight time with lightweight people. Now, it's okay to have casual friends as long as you give them casual time, not serious time. Spend major time with major influence and minor time with minor influence. It's so easy to do just the opposite, but don't let it be said that you fell into that trap. So maybe all you need to do to change some of the influences in your life is not to eliminate them, but merely limit them. Say, 
I have a good time with these people, but I'm not going to spend days and days with them anymore. I'm just going to cut that down and save some of that time for more major people and more major enterprises. Remember, it's your life. You can spend your time with whomever you want and whenever you want. But you didn't invest in this program for me to kid you. Take a look at your priorities and your values. We have so little time at our disposal. Wouldn't it make sense to invest it wisely? If you have only a hundred dollars in your pocket, it's okay to spend 20 for fun and put 80 toward your important values and commitments. But would you be happy reversing those percentages? Better to put the majority of your money where you know it will get you a positive return rather than put it where the taste is brief and the results are poor. Of course, you must be the judge. You must determine whether the situation and the people call for disassociation or limited association. But remember, if it isn't taking you where you want to be five years from now, ten years from now, now is the time to fix it.